So that's constructability. Um, once we have our full constructability um, set of information, we would then use it in the takeoff. So if I go to takeoff model, um, in the takeoff manager, you see I right click to say, this is the new work set that I would like to use. Um, this is the new workflow. I click on takeoff model and it brings up this um, view where I can see, let's zoom to see the whole thing, not just that uh, one issue that we were looking at earlier. Um, and if I sort the items that are shown in this model and start to interrogate, so here we can see some pad footings. Let's uh, just rotate the model and you can see the connectivity. So that under here, under the building, we can see the pad footings type 1, F1, uh, the F2 footings, the F3 footings and so on and so on. Um, so let's, F2 was had a, a few more and um, we right click to isolate and find out um, exactly where the quantities are coming from maybe. So if we drill down into this element, um, we can see what we call the takeoff quantities. So this is the takeoff item here, the pad footing, which has been created uh, directly from the way that the guys have modeled it using the um, BIM authoring tool. Um, and that's one part that uh, is extremely important um, to get the authoring correct following um, a, a good naming structure. Here we see the uniform at classification and the name and then the um, type. And this information can be used to directly um, create the cost plan should you have a model progression specification all geared up and, um, and, and ready, waiting for your models um, and knowing what level of detail you're going to get. Here we can, what are we, so if we select the top surface area, you can see in the right hand side the um, top surface area is shown, and we zoom in, and then um, for example the edge surface area we might need here for the formwork, um, and the edge surface area is shown. All of this information is then used in the cost plan. So um, it's, uh, and it's, it's a pretty simple step, um, but one of the keys in using model-based uh, quantity data is the review session in this takeoff. And, um, and some of these you can see here, so um, takeoff item is missing quantities, this is the exclamation, and we would then investigate exactly which quantities were missing, um, and we can analyze the reasons why, and then change that. So you can see here, these are the steel beams in the roof, um, and maybe some of them are cut certain ways, uh, potentially, um, and there might be some quantities that need a, a, a small refinement before you want to use them in your cost plan. So that's takeoff. Um, I, uh, obviously, at that point in time, you can then create a report, um, and without going to the report with it again, I just show you a quantity takeoff report. So here we can see for all of the different types of item in the database and all of the quantities that we can use for estimating. Um, this could be produced and used for another estimating system. Um, should you have something that um, you want to import the quantities into, uh, this can be output in a, an Excel spreadsheet should you wish. Um, once we've refined the information in our takeoff, we can then use it for cost planning. So we have our coordinated models and uh, we have our uh, takeoff, so we have all of our quantities. Then we go to want to plan this cost information. So we go to the cost planner uh, module and we click on the plan cost and then we can see in the structure here a um, the spreadsheet which shows us uh, a very clear way of summarizing the information and, and and reporting it back. So we've got really detailed level of information right the way right the way down into um, the pad footings type two, and then uh, we need some excavation for this pad footing, and um, this excavation has a certain um, consumption rate, which means that we're needing this many hours of labor, and this is the cost of the labor per hour, and this is the, then the uh, overall cost. And this is all summarized back up the chain uh, to report back that the full um, substructure is going to cost 630000 uh, 39000 and then um, the overall building, the lab building, is now at um, nine, 9 million in this example. Um, and there are different ways to add certain um, allowances which are non-model based as well. 
um, I will talk about how this cost uh, is generated through the quantities from the, the cost from the uh, BIM model elements. But first, let's just look at the cost planner and 3D view so that we can then understand more about the visual feedback, so the visually, visual estimating. Um, here we see the building in the right-hand side, and we can see that the uh, most of it is highlighted in yellow. Uh, if we highlight just the substructure item, then you can see just the substructure, and we can see that we've included all of the substructure. Um, and if we drill down, this is nice because you can see the standard foundations, the special foundations, etc. And the quantity, if I stay on this example where we've got the pad footing, uh, the quantities for these pad footings are driven by the simple formula editor. Uh, remember I said it was very much like Excel. Um, the formula in this box, you just click on the FX button and it will bring up the formula editor. And you can see that for this cast in place pad footing, if we scroll to that pad footing, and we can see that the net volume is used, it's ticked here, and that is what's being used in the formula editor here, saying that this takeoff item, please show me the net volume, and it evaluates the net volume in the box below. We can then report um, by quantity, by uh, location as well. So if we had, um, maybe this is a floor slab and we only wanted to record the, uh, the quantity that work on levels one and two because on level three and four and five it was more expensive, uh, we can do that. We can also have many built-in functions, so um, mathematical and uh, logical functions. So we can see um, maybe if we wanted to include only uh, if a certain wall or a certain footing was over a greater um, a certain depth and um, and then return that in the formula uh, so that we can have more detailed quantity takeoff. So that is quantity takeoff um, and cost planning using those quantities. Um, obviously when we get a quantity, and I've shown you just an example in here where we have a uh, consumption, so for the excavation where we have a laborer and we have a consumption of a certain number of hours per cubic yard. We also, in certain respects, um, have wastage, and um, there are additional columns in here, so for waste factors and uh, for markups and um, making sure that you've got your add-ons distributed, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a full um, estimating interface using the driven quantities from the model at whatever level of detail you would like to go to. So it could be and that's where this estimate started. It could be that you just start at um, the foundations level and use the, um, the gross floor area, for example, or um, the, the floor area for the services. We could just say um, this information is driven by a lump sum um, from a subcontractor. So you can mix and match all of the different levels of detail um, in the same building and we can understand what's included by, as we saw, the, the 3D view being able to see this. The, um, the next step is cost exploring. And um, once we have this information, we can then go to explore the cost and see what the cost was uh, compared to, or is now compared to our target cost. Um, or we can compare between two different versions, for example. So we open the Cost Explorer view, and on the left-hand side, when this view opens, it will show the tree. So on the left-hand side, we have a tree-like structure, which is in, um, a direct representation of our classification. And we can see the nodes, which are representing um, the previous version and the new version. And we can compare costs to the target um, maybe if I do this in the 3D window, so let's go to the Cost Explorer in 3D, and then you can see how that um, will then be, uh, it will use both the, the um, tree-like structure and also the 3D view, and it will filter those two. So we can see here that on the left-hand side, if I compare this to the target and select a target, so we have one target version, and then if we um, select outside of this box, um, this target version will then show us a comparison of the two. Um, so it now calculates that comparison 
and it shows us on the nodes here. So we can see on the left hand side we've got the nodes showing that one version is 101% of the budget, the original budget. We can drill down into here and see that the shell has increased by um, here 13% and if we click on this item we can see which parts of the shell have increased so we can see drill down to the superstructure, floor construction, um, this is the steel, so these are the steel columns um, and see these are 294% of the original budget. Uh, why is that? Well, uh, we can add and change this view, um, change the layout and add a um, another space underneath this view, so if we select that and then we can uh, add the cost planner view at the bottom and if we go to this steel um, we can see the view at the bottom will filter for the information and it will show us just those components and um, we can see in the um, in the view on the right as well um, the cost plan items being filtered for that element type. 